Hello, I'm Charlotte Cosby, Head of Creative for Farrow and Ball, and I am very pleased and excited to welcome you to the official launch of our nine new colours live from our home in Dorset. I am joined by Morris the Milk Float, who is 47 years old today, and Joa Studham, our world famous colour consultant, who will shortly be revealing our nine new colours. Directly after the talk, we will be having questions in a live Q&A, so please make sure you send your questions via Periscope or Twitter using the hashtag Colour Talk Live. So any further ado, I'm going to hand over to Joa to go through the colours. Thank you, Charlie. Well, creating colours for Farrenborn, new colours, is an incredibly exciting process, but it's obviously not an exact science. Sometimes I think when you're sort of immersed in the colourful world of Farrenborn, that it almost becomes instinctive. But we do look at gaps because we're trying to create little families which are, of colours which are easy to use. And of course, we look at trends and we know that we love our homes more and more as time goes on and we sort of treat them as sanctuaries. So these colours are supposed to be life-giving, uh, but they are quite sort of understated and humble in many ways. Uh, they go right back to our roots for our, in our 70th anniversary year. And really what we're doing is building a sophisticated, muted palette, building on the original and the best. And you probably know that at Farron Ball, we absolutely love our neutrals. And we want to really to make sure that there is something to appeal to everyone and in every light. So this is our first colour, a colour we refined and refined over and over again to get it exactly right. It is actually a lighter version of much-loved shaded white that you see here. And it's a neutral which is a little bit less yellow than the traditional neutrals, something like super satin, and obviously less grey than ammonite. Basically, it's a safe pair of hands in any situation. And we have called this colour shadow white, which links it inextricably to shaded white. Um, and basically, these colours both are fantastically like the sort of soft tones created when you put white into deep shadow. It's utterly usable, incredibly beautiful, and I think that really it's there for people who still want to have very light colours in their homes. So here I'm just going to pair it with shaded white, as I showed you before, and Wimborne white for something, as I say, beautiful, usable, and easy to use. So that's our first neutral, and of course it does have a friend. Here we have um, a colour which is this time a little bit darker than shaded white. Um, we have done this before where we've created two colours around an existing colour from Farron Ball and it's very successful. So this one is a little bit darker than shaded white and of course it works perfectly with our original shadow white. It's called drop cloth. Um, a drop cloth is an alternative name to a dust sheet. Um, so basically, this is a nod to all the incredibly loyal painters and decorators who've used Farrow and Ball for so many years. Um, I think it's a sort of plain name, but it's also quite intriguing, is really what we were trying to do. Um, this colour doesn't need a huge amount of explanation, except that we've discovered it's a, a, a sort of weight of colour, a level of colour, which people really like to live in. So it's a little less green than old white, it's less red than Oxford stone, and a little less lilac than the contemporary elephant's breath. Um, so hopefully there was something there for everybody to use in every light and every taste, actually. Um, I'm sure people will naturally go for the combination of shadow white and shaded white with drop cloth but I love to put it with these slightly mismatched colours. Here we have blue grey and light grey which really takes us back to a very sort of farm ball traditional feel. So there we have drop cloth. Now we have the last of our gap fillers. Um, this is one which was constantly requested we created a group of colours which we refer to as the easy greys, um, and they are perfect stone and ammonite and cornforth white. But there was a little gap here between perfect stone and mole's breath, and this is where this colour comes in. So it's a brilliant accent for the easy greys, but it also stands fantastically as a backdrop for any kind of popping colours that you want to use. See here, for instance, what happens when you put it with yellow cake, it just looks amazing. So the naming of this colour goes is actually created in a village in Norfolk, which linked it fantastically to another Farron Ball colour, 
called Stooky Blue, or sometimes called Stiffy Blue, in which it looks incredibly chic with, also from a Norfolk village. So here we have Stooky Blue and Purbeck Stone, and you can't get much more chic than that, really. Next, we have something which is really a little bit more poetic in feel, the softest of colours, so pretty and so easy to use, as you see here. Um, everybody loves the names Mizzle and Dimps. They're weather-related uh, names, not too obvious. You know, Mizzle is a mix of mist and drizzle. Um, and this colour we have called Cromity. And Cromity comes from the shipping forecast, which was so much part of British life, and just conjures up that feeling of swirling mists and swirling seas. As I say, it's incredibly easy to use, creating the softest of rooms. It is indeed a lighter version, as you see here, of Mizzle. But what I think is incredibly useful is those who want a light blue room, it just is a little bit warmer than something like Skylight, which has that sort of coolness. This also, Cromity also has a little bit of grey in it, so it's very much sort of of today. And for me, when you use these colours in a room, perhaps you would pair it with... Here we see uh, drop cloth, which I just showed you, and pigeon. And basically what happens when you go into rooms painted in these colours is that your shoulders just drop. They feel so relaxed. And I think that's a, a lovely way to feel. So that's chromity. Now for something which feels sort of incredibly old-fashioned in many ways, um, but it's so on trend, so absolutely on trend. It will create that sort of humble interior that we're all craving, and it's the softest of pinks, but it's got this great big dose of grey in it, which makes it into such a sort of barren ball colour. Um, it works fantastically with what we call the contemporary neutrals, things like Skimming Stone and Elephant's Breath, which I think these are absolutely wonderful for the classic contemporary home. And the romance of this colour is perfectly summed up by its name. It's called peignoir, a peignoir being the sort of chiffony, dusty um, garment which ladies used to put on after their baths to wash their hair. It has that very sort of chiffon feel to it. And what I particularly love about this colour is although it's an obvious choice for bedrooms, it's fantastic in living rooms as well. And I think if I sh compare it here with the very pretty Middleton pink, you can see that it, although it's pink, it is definitely proves that pink is not just for boys. Uh, it's not just for girls, I apologise. So it's great when you can contrast it with something like really strong, like Brinjal, or indeed we bring in another of the contemporary neutrals in Dovetail. So that's beautiful, soft, romantic peignoir. Now for something much more moody, much darker. Um, this is an incredibly sort of complex colour. In typical Farrow and Ball way, it's very difficult to know, is it blue, is it green, is it grey? Um, and the answer is all of the above, really. But what I know is that it's exactly the right tone for 2016, for all those people who've embraced using very dark colours in their homes. Um, many people love downpipe. It's just to show you that it is a lot greener than downpipe. It's a lot less blue than Hague blue and very different to Mole's Breath. And actually, as I say, brilliant for contemporary homes on the interiors. It actually came to life on an exterior situation. It was a colour which was made especially for Lord and, Name, Lord and Lady Inchara at Inchara House, which is a classic Georgian mansion in Scotland. And basically this was for their barn doors It was originally made. Um, and we had to have something which would just suit the moody Scottish skies and all that sort of nature around it. So we've called it Inchara uh, Blue, and I love to put it with colours which do sort of remind you of nature. So here, for instance, with light blue and with downpipe, this lovely moody colour. There have been over the years, as I say, we, all, we chat to all the people who work in our showrooms and we do lots and lots of... Um, experimentation with colours and lots of people have asked us for a proper chocolatey brown so here we have one um, it's much less red than London clay and obviously much less green than the classic 
mouse's back. And fantastically, it worked really well with virtually every neutral group as an accent. And to me, it feels like it's just been sort of plucked from a Georgian cottage in Spitalfields. You know, that's what's really wonderful about it. So I like to put very, very strong colours with it. And we have called it Salon Drab. And Salon Drab, uh, one is... The, name, the word salon refers to the room outside, the little outer room outside a drawing room. But I like the fact that it sort of conjures up thoughts of to bohemian men drinking absinthe late at night, that kind of salon. And drab is a word which basically means colours which are not very bright. And it's, I love the word using the word drab because it just feels like it's a very informed word used by proper colourists. And as it is so rich, as I said, I love to put it with these strong, strong colours. So here we have Salon Drab with Rectory Red and Arsenic. Beautiful set of sort of Georgian feeling colours. Next, we have something fresh and uncomplicated, the lovely colour green that we have here. Um, green has been massively popular, enduringly popular, actually, in, uh, in decorating. And we have always had fantastic greens in really soft, delicate tones and serious, strong greens. But we've never had anything quite like this, this sort of fresh, clean colour. Um, and it feels like a grown-up version, really, of cooking apple green, which is a very, very popular colour, as you see here. And this colour was originally found in a hamstone farmhouse in Somerset. And it was when the gun cupboard was moved that they found this colour behind it. We have no idea how long it had been there for. But what I found personally incredibly exciting was the fact that it actually it just mimicked the colour exactly of the sort of fresh verdant fields all around the house. And the house was called Yeabridge House. So we have indeed called this colour um, Yeabridge Green. And the other fascinating thing for me about this is that it, I think it will really appeal to the sort of historic Farron Ball user. So if you team it with something like very traditional colour, like bone, it looks historic. But look what happens when you put it with Tanner's Brown, something really exciting happens. And you can see how it could be used in a very contemporary house as well. And our last colour here... Wow, is this one exciting. It cannot fail to make you smile, this colour. It's just joyous and so full of life. It is actually a tweak on what we call an archive colour. We have a fantastic resource of colours from many, many years ago. And this was an old colour of ours called Mere Green. So we've just made it a bit lighter and just a bit more sort of usable for, for 2016, basically. Um, it's so full of life that we really wanted to call it something which sort of lived up to that. And we've called it Vardo, a Vardo being a Romany horse-drawn wagon or gypsy horse-drawn wagon. And this colour was actually used very, very often in the decoration of these uh, wagons, um, quite often used probably over red. So I'm just going to team it here with a strong red, radicchio. And I love also when you put it with black blue. But what's amazing about this colour is it's a real chameleon. Because if you put it with a bright white, as you see here, it looks very, very fresh. Um, and if you put it with darker colours, it just becomes much more sort of sexy in feel um, and much more sort of glamorous. And look, we can even use it on a, a, a milk float, as you see here. And I'd just like to say lastly, actually, that we never created, went out to create a sort of group of colours. We always worked on them absolutely individually. But I'll just show you here, when we put them all together, you can imagine our joy when we saw how beautifully they sit together. As I say, a sophisticated, muted palette, um, which feels like it's always been part of the Farron Ball family. Thank you so much, Joa. We hope you have all got your favourites now. We're just waiting for Steve the Milkman to deliver us the questions for the live Q&A. Thank you very much, Steve. <laughs> Are you ready? I'm ready. Right, so our first question is from Lucy, and she asks, what was your inspiration behind Salon Drab? The inspiration behind Salon Drab was absolutely for that to get that true Georgian feel. Um, as I said, it feels like it's sort of been plucked from a Spitalfields um, cottage, really. And it was just to have something which might work for a very sort of contemporary media room, but also brilliant in sort of men's studies, as well as being an accent colour for nearly every um, neutral group. 
perhaps leading on from that, um, Lucinda would like some colour inspiration for a rustic dining room. Do you have any ideas? Oh, gosh. Well, rustic, I think we have to go straight to Yeabridge Green because it just has that feeling of being sort of very sort of countryfied. If you want to make it particularly rustic, don't t- team it with a bright white. Uh, you'd be much better off using a much stronger, uh, darker white, possibly old white, I would think, um, to keep give it that sort of rustic feel. I'm not sure who this question is from, but they would like to know um, a colour that is lighter than mole's breath but has a slight bit of blue in it. Oh, gosh, well... It's very specific. <laughs> very specific. Lighter than mole's breath would be worsted, one of the new colours. Um, it doesn't really have very much blue in it because the idea behind those easy greys so that they are incredibly easy to live with. Um, once you get a little bit bluer, they become colder. So I think you've been almost too s- specific. <laughs> Right, so on from that. This one is from Periscope. How does Vardo compare to Oval Room Blue? Well, Oval Room Blue is one of my absolute top favourite Farrenball colours, so there's, I could talk about it forever. Vardo is greener and it's a little bit stronger. Um, actually, I think really in essence, Oval Room Blue is a little bit more serious. It, um, Although I use it in, sort of often use it in children's bedrooms, it has a slightly more serious air, whereas Vardo is really uplifting. Um, we now have one that says, I'd like to use chromity in my kitchen. Do you have any suggestions? Wow. Um, well, if you were using chromity on the units, perhaps I would actually use shadow white on the walls. Perhaps put chromity on the units. You could also then perhaps bring in Inchara blue, the much stronger tone, either as a, a kitchen uh, island or perhaps on the legs of a central kitchen table. Because if you have something strong and deep, like Inchara Blue, centrally, everything else around it will feel bigger and lighter. And that's a beautiful combination. Um, I love the new teal colour, but I'm scared to use it. What do you suggest? Oh, the, they must be referring to Vardo. Well, if you're scared of colour, I think we all know that the best thing to do is to start off with it small. So I often put things in cupboards. It sounds absolutely mad, but you might have a completely white room and then you open your cupboard and inside it you reveal something like Vardo or perhaps use it in a room you don't use yourself very often. So that might be a spare room, perhaps if you have a guest room. You know, then you can just peek it through the door as you pass and you don't have to live with it every day. And then we have another question about salon drabs, obviously oh, proving quite, <laughs> quite popular. Um, which white should I use with salon drab? Uh, well, with salon drab, I would avoid <clears throat> using any bright whites for certain. So um, I would probably go for something like Oxford stone on woodwork, which is not that contrasty, and perhaps Joa's white on the ceiling. You definitely don't want to put a bright white with it because it will kill it and make it feel just sort of, basically the contrast will be too big. And then finally, what is Joa's favourite new colour? Oh, goodness. Am I allowed to say that? (laughs) Of course you are. (laughs) Um, Well, I have to admit that my sitting room is painted in Penoir right at this moment, and I absolutely love it, Um, just because it has that kind of humble feeling, and it it feels like it's giving you a great big hug, basically. Is there any other colours that you would like to use somewhere in your home? Well, um, I think I've used them all, actually. (laughs) To be really honest. Joa has a habit every time we get new <laughs> colours of just putting them everywhere in the house and you go back to visit her and suddenly she has a completely new yeah, house I haven't every got, new colour. I haven't got comedy in the house at the moment, but you know, give, give me time. <laughs> it's only, only a matter of time. seconds, yes. Well, thank you again, Joa. It's well, been great you, um, having you here. Thank you so much for all of your questions. Anything that we haven't answered, our team will get back to you via the medium in which you contacted us. Um, It's been absolutely wonderful being able to present to you in this way. So if you want any further inspiration or would like to find out whether Morris is coming to a town near you, then please visit Farrenball website. Thank you for watching. Thank you.